dire necessities or mother nature's rest peace. I don't know the rest of the lyrics, <laughs> but we've seen the song before, I know, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a classic off the Will and Jose hits. Yeah, we have a remix album coming out <laughs> soon. I guess we gotta release the first album out first, but it'll be, just wait for it. It's gonna happen, I just know it. It's been a really peaceful morning. We went from a waterfall. Now we're here uh, walking down this bamboo bridge, which looks fairly new. It's what Will pointed out earlier. Yeah. And we're heading, it looks like a floating cottage. You could do like uh, your birthday party out That's here. That's insane. It's been my birthday there. You heard it here, folks. Will's 37th birthday. Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ah, okay, sir. See you, sir. So awesome. <laughs> Welcome to Venus Vlog. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Tubud. Floating cottage here. <laughs> She's like, eh. Wow, this is neat. Actually, this is probably one of the coolest <laughs> Thank you for the ride, Odd. You're welcome. Thank you. This is a beautiful carriage. This is a chariot. This is a chariot. This is not a fit for a queen. This is a chariot. Good morning. 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 Thank you. Venus, can you go down the slide for a drone shot? Well, yeah. I, I, I don't with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You're learning, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going in Muslim what we call Kahawa. Kahawa? Yes, Kahawa. Yes, Kahawa. Muslim terms. Oh, it's it's probably the best brewed coffee. It tastes like it already has sugar in it. It's mm. very good. Coming to Tubud, we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into, but as soon as we saw the boat and where it was taking us, we knew it was going to be a good time. Continuing in our <laughs> traditional fashion, it is, it's a trek to get here, as in like the vehicle you take. But guys, anytime you have to take that type of trek, I find out we always end up having the best time, and it's mm -hmm. always usually the most beautiful. This place is great. He's not lying. We're on this floating cottage, and the views are literally priceless all around us. Guys, this is a perfect place <laughs> to bring your friends, a lot of friends, your family, just to escape for a day or something like that. And I believe it's 8,000 pesos for 12 hours. 12 hours. Which includes a free boat ride from that side of the island to the, like, your floating cottage. Mm -hmm. And I believe you can also go to this island over here. We're not sure the cost for the boat from here to there, but it's very cheap, we already know, we've <laughs> been told. And guys, it's literally, I would have the best party here by far. It's like the ultimate pool house. You have a diving board where you're able to jump off into the lake. A slide. A slide. And we learned that to boot means uh, spring water. So if you dive deep enough in this lake, you will get that spring water. Guys, it's, it's definitely a place I would come to. I'm glad we came here and I'm glad they showed it because you wouldn't even know it was here. Mm -hmm. And they have a jukebox. So if you're into karaoke as much as we are, you could sing your heart out for the 12 hours that you rent this bungalow out, floating bungalow. Any more info we have, we'll get to you guys. We'll put it below. This is a uh, rabir. That's the rubber, okay. Yeah, yeah, came from the rubber tree. Ah. Uh, also used in the, how to make a fire. Okay. Yeah. We did not know. Simple. Very, so that's what it looks like right when it comes off the tree? Yeah. Uh, look like a uh, maggi. Yeah. In Visaya is pansi, pansi. Pansi, yeah. 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 That's yeah. literally yeah. what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, we'll try it later. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> without that's any, so cool. without this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. cannot uh, make a fire. Yeah, yeah. One is the kutisha. Oh, the kutisha. Very sharp one. Lighter. What's for all? It's too much. But this is be careful. Okay. Delicacia, yeah, it's, 
kang cook a fish like in soup okay you put inside big fire you can put the wood small wood this is simple this is neat and with our luck we actually get to visit a rubber farm later on on our trip and we're super excited doesn't this remind you of gum when like you take it out of your mouth and you just like play with it in your hand no no, no? <laughs> just me we'll end it all right we'll end it then all right you guys that was very nice we needed that caffeine the pastries were delish and the people were so nice yeah and they were all um muslim delicacies mm -hmm. which actually i i guess i can't get over that <laughs> i'm not even exaggerating that is that is the best coffee i've had in a long time it was really good and, and they were all so kind and polite and again the hospitality here is just the philippines man. it mm -hmm. doesn't matter where you go they are just kind and polite and make you feel welcome and safe and all the above they just need an award you all need all the filipino people need an award for having the best hospitality in the world like, it's a strong claim close. but i feel like it's true no we know we live, <laughs> it. We live it every day also there's a turkey here and my attention span is i gotta go <laughs> All right, guys, we're here at Charles and Charlie. It is a Calabansi processing center and store, which we're gonna show you and it's super cute and it's right off the road, so you have no excuse at the come. If you're probably wondering what's around our next, it's these cute little yes, like come on. badges they made us. Like we come weren't on. expecting them, so we just got That's late. It. We got laid by the Sambuanga Simbu Guy people, and we're just excited to get in there, learn a little bit more, and have some calamansi. Yeah, if this is the welcome we got, come on. So, all right, we're gonna go in here, right. taste some calamansi, hopefully, mm -hmm. and mingle with the people. Yes. All right. That's a, okay. What do you think? If you already know me, you already know I love calamansi juice, so <laughs> we're gonna see if we can drink some. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leslie. I'm the daughter of the owner. This is a processing plant, correct? Yes, um, it is under the under this building. So it's underneath yeah. this building. So these are living products that you process here and sell them here. Yes. Is this the only place you sell them, or do you sell them in, like other shops? We have shops? distributors from Cebu, Cagayan, and Cebu. Ah, okay. When you process it to make calamansi juice, how many calamansi do you guys go through? Um, in a one mixture, we have uh, we are using four sacks of calamansi, uh, calamansi pure calamansi, and then we can make uh, one tub of puree, and then we can make uh, I guess fifty cases of puree, puree alone. For the juices, we can make thirty cases of it. Wow! Every day. Our calamansi is harvested throughout yearly, or is there like a specific time of the year where it's a good time? We harvest yearly, but right now the demand is so <laughs> uh, so high. So, how far away are the the farms, that you, the calamansi farms, from here? Um, we have um, calamansi pickers who okay. actually deliver it here. Okay. Okay. Let's go that to them. Got you. So they yeah. bring it here, process, yeah. and then okay. Different calamansi owners from Balukanan and Batu, they deliver it right here. Oh, so it's people from different areas of the island. And then during the processing, how many people work the process? Of we have 15 employees okay. who is working with the factory. Hi, Hi welcome to my plant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Nalvino Corres and she is calamansi capital of the Philippines. And I thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we made it to the calamansi farm. And for those of you that don't know what calamansis are, they're the Filipino staple of a lime that you will get in America. You see them everywhere. You will not come to the Philippines and not see it served with every dish. Mm -hmm. Every, this is everywhere. It's it's life, like rice. <laughs> it's literally with everything. Am I wrong? It just adds more flavor to what is being eaten or drank. But when they brought us, we made it to the Calamansi farm, and we're gonna show you. We're we're kind of surprised. I don't know why. You'll see why we're surprised, yeah. and we'll tell you why. 
Oh. Oh, it's literally right there. This should, it should be this big for them to harvest it. Okay. How many calamansis usually grow in a typical, like, bush? 400 and something. 400 pieces, pieces of calamansi. Yeah. So and this? This one, yes. how many? 400 to 500. Oh, how, how many? So you see these little shrubs. They say they produce probably get 400 for every three. And guys, that's a lot. That's the size of my brain. <laughs> Wait, let me see it. It's a little small. No, that's that's bigger actually. Bigger than my brain? Sorry. All right, go. <laughs> okay. But it's the size of my ego. <laughs> also, guys, when we ask how many people work in this Kalamazi plantation, he says it's just him, and oftentimes he will have four or five assistants. But can you imagine just you yourself just picking out all these Kalamazis? On a daily a basis. Day. How many calamansis does he harvest a day? Like, if it's him and four or five assistants, how many do they pick out? Twenty burikis a day, so times four hundred. That is a lot. That's in a day. Eight thousand? Wait, times four hundred? Eight thousand? Times oh, 12. Times, times 20, 20. Four times to 8. I'm not good with math. It's a lot more calamansi. <laughs> Let's just say it's a lot of calamansi. It's a lot. To be honest, you guys, Will and I didn't really know what to expect out of a calamansi farm. I was under the impression that it was kind of like an apple orchard where you like pick the calamansi from the trees. But when we got here, we we're like, wait, they're bushes. Um, also, it's very interesting. Jose's going to show you the way that they kind of replant the trees kind of jumps up the process instead of having to build from the seed because you know anytime you plant anything it takes forever once you plant a seed but Armando's smart practical so we'll show you that it's from the seed it's too hard to grow okay so they what, what they do is they put them some soil and then once once the soil um they, they they keep the soil there and then the, the roots start to grow. Okay. And they cut it here and they plant that. Oh, oh to make, to grow it. another yes, one. To, to grow another one. We're glad we got to see it. We're glad we came. We got a souvenir. He was very kind. And again, the more we know, it's nice to actually know where things come from. And now that we've been traveling for, and been in Asia for almost two years, we realize how much in the States we take these for granted. We want to be packaged and pretty. We don't want to see the process. Maybe you do, you just don't know. But living in Asia, you like, you really get to take advantage of all of that. It just makes everything that much more special. And it makes you appreciate it even more. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, we're off to somewhere else next. I'm telling you, tight schedule. All right, guys, we're super excited to be at this next location. We've both been counting down the minutes to get here. And we're here at the rubber tree plantation. And honestly, we both don't know what we're getting ourselves into or what to expect out of the entire experience. Yeah, we don't even know what a rubber tree is. We didn't even know it came for tree, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> Did we? No. What we do know is that tires, latex gloves, and your handy dandy condoms come mm -hmm. out of these rubber trees something to think about yeah just something to think about but yeah we're gonna there, we have a whole bunch of people here they're gonna show us around and i can tell you already it's gonna be an experience and we're ready to do it let's go, let's go. okay how to tap and that is the first you can get this pancit, okay the that, that, that rubber is actually pancit. the one that was burned in yes, one. Back of crap. Yes. Ah. okay it's like pancit, yeah. yes you know, it's I want to do yeah, like this. This is the cup. That's where it catches, okay. And the, and the cup holder. Okay. Cup holder. And this is the tapping knife. The tapping knife. Is there a name to the knife? Or is it just a knife? tapping knife? How many days or hours does it take to flip a cup? Two hours. So how many people oh, I was about to say that. will work during the day doing this? Uh, in one section, one person. One person, one person one okay. One hectare, one section, one hectare. One okay. person, one hectare? Oh, 453. 453. 
So that's the latex. Yes. How and long it, does it take for it to yes. harden? Lamb. This is a cup lamb. Okay. So how long does it take for it to get hard from the sand? It's a kadugay. Mamugahi uh, siya. Uh, uh, thirty minutes. Oh, thirty okay. minutes. Oh, so it's quick. Yes, quick. Yeah. You do a better job than I do. It's hard, isn't it? Yes. Do it hard. Uh, Old hard. Yes. Ah. Very good. Yes. There we go. Very right. good. Success. All right. Wow, you did a better job than I did. So this is uh, yes. my so this... general top manager. Ah, nice to meet you, sir. Uh, Will, nice, meet nice to meet you. This level is uh, good for seven, seven years. Seven oh, years. wow. Okay. Like if you get all of the rubber off this now, until until you get all the way to the bottom. Ah, gotcha. And after um, after collecting all this data, it has been what's the name of the chemical? Uh, formic acid. All right. Well, how do you feel after your first pro. attempt? I'm the pro with this. You want to do it again? Should we yeah. try again? I want to. Yeah, I want to redeem. I want to like be able to do it the entire way, right? Instead of breaking it off. But it means that's what it looks like when it's all put together. Yeah. That's when they harden, right? When it gets hard. Oh, it's oh, literally it's rubber. rubber. It's rubber. So this is natural latex. Okay. And mix. Uh, there is a mixture of chemicals, uh, formic acid. Okay. Uh, then so that become become uh, hard. Now then that we call a uh, lump. We got Monaco. <laughs> You're gonna see these. It takes one week. one week. So we collect all of those. It takes one week to make one of these. Guys, that's a commitment. That's a commitment. Like that's. And before they even uh, load them up, they weigh them on the scale. And they average about 40, 40 kilos. kilos. 40 kilos. 40, 40 kilos. Uh, Is that like the average? In one week, uh, more or less 20. Kilos plus. 2,000 kilos plus. 2,000 kilos? 20,000. 20, plus kilos. All right, guys, our time here in Sambuanga, Sibugai has sadly come to an end, and we're packing up to head on to our next destination. Guys, we've had an amazing time. I can say with every fiber of my being, Zamboanga Sibugai is one of the coolest places we've been to. They've been the kindest people, mm -hmm. and I have not only felt safe, but welcomed and loved. And if you're a foodie, you need to come to Zamboanga just because the seafood here is so fresh and every single thing that we've had to eat here has been nothing but the freshest and the scrumptious and the most yummiest. I mean, you can see from our vlogs, like we've literally had <laughs> some of the best experiences we've had. There's so much to do here. There's so much to offer. The people are kind. And guys, if you've been a part of our experience in Zamboanga, Sipugai, in any way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. we, from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you for making this experience once in a lifetime. We cannot thank you more. And a special thanks to you, Governor Ann Kay Hopper, yes. for having us not only in your home, but giving us the opportunity to share with our subscribers and the rest of the world what Sambuanga Sibugai has to offer. And don't forget, we're gonna be back again. We are. But yeah, from rain to Ross, to Noli, to Venus, to our drivers, Ronaldo, to Joar, to mm -hmm. Jean, like everybody, thank you so, so much. <laughs> it's meant the world to us and we could not have experienced a better time. And we've been so spoiled by you all. Now we expect an entourage wherever we go. But seriously, thank you to you viewers for just watching this experience with us and 
seeing that Mindanao isn't what people portrayed to be. Like Jose said, Zimbabwe Sibugay is not what you read into the stories of the past. It has literally moved past that. Mm. We're building a brighter future. We felt safe, we felt loved. And you guys, it's, it's worth the visit. It's worth it the is. visit 100%. So thank you so much. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification because we're traveling still within the Samoanga Peninsula for the next three days before we head back to Cebu. Thank you guys for having us. Thank you guys for trusting us. And thank you to everybody involved. You guys have really made our lives and extended our time in the Philippines to be even more amazing than it was before. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you guys. All right, later. Later.